Here I am on a trail, and why is that? Well, I've got a Scutes Voyager here, which is a 27.5 inch mountain e-bike from them. So this particular model here, I'll be putting it through its paces. I'll go down this trail right here, which is quite technical and steep, which you probably don't really want to be doing on a bike like this. However, a bit of light mountain biking, it is definitely capable of. So we've got a front shock up here with approximately three inches of travel. And as mentioned, 27.5 inch wheel, so a proper mountain bike size, not like some of the other bikes I'll review, which only have 20 inch wheels on them. So the removable battery here is 10 amp hours or 480 watt hours. The motor in the rear hub, that's 250 watts. And it does have a claim range, this particular 27.5 inch e-bike of up to 100 kilometers. And I will be putting that to the test. Now the Voyager does come well boxed with a lot of padding around it. Inside you will find 110 watt power supply, some tools, a reflector, some paperwork, and an optional accelerator that you can install on this bike. Now the Escute Voyager here weighs 25 kilos and it caters for riders 120 centimeters to 200 centimeters in height. So it's a 48 volt system they are using. The motor which is in the rear hub right here, this is 250 watts. And then our gears, well the Derelia, we have Shimano. So we've got the typical seven speed that I do see on a lot of these e-bikes. The chain is a KMC one here, which they do claim is an anti-rust chain, so it should not corrode. It is painted, and we have Welgo pedals here. So they are using brand pedals. So it's an ABS-style plastic in the middle, metal around the outside, which I prefer making it a lot stronger. The crank at the front here has a plastic chain guard around it, and the clearance underneath the crank here to where the ground is is reasonable. So you can drop down curbs and things without having to worry about hitting this. And our front shock right here, no brand name shock, but for a cheap shock, it's not actually too bad. We do have around about three inches of travel with this one. It can also be locked out, which you don't often see. There's a powerful front headlight, so this does contain four LEDs within it. You can see it during the day, and at nighttime, it lights up the path ahead of you. And I've seen this model used before. It's actually quite a good one, very powerful. Inside the box, you'll find a reflector, and I'll put my own rear LED tail light on here just for improved safety. So the seat itself, not too bad. There is a little bit of cushioning which gives us a couple of centimeters of padding there and the height can go right up and you can also drop it right down. This is a quick release here that it does have. And we have 27.5 inch rims with this one. Kinder brand tires, so they are a known brand. And these ones are 27.5 by 2.1 inches wide. And the Voyager here does come with a very sturdy kickstand. For brakes, we have mechanical disc brakes, 160 millimeters at the front and 160 also at the back. So our battery right here is removable. It sits inside the frame here. It's lockable, so there's a key there. And with this, you're able then to just unlock it, pop it out. Now there is a battery gauge on here. So just tapping here, you can see the levels of the battery. Right here is where you charge it, so that's where the DC in plug goes. And there's a little dustproof, weatherproof cap over that. Now the charge time for the 10 amp hour battery, which is 480 watt hours, will take approximately seven hours to fully charge. So the display on this one's quite good. You can make it out very clearly in direct sunlight, not a problem. So you can see right now the wattage speed right here, and you can cycle through this. So that's my max speed, average speed, trip, time riding, and even our wattage from the motor that can be displayed. And it's interesting to watch this when you go up some of the hills, what it actually gets up to, sometimes about 900 watts that it will end up pulling. Battery percentage right here, well broken down our battery gauge here, so each one of those represents 25% of the battery. And this is our different pedal assist level. So pressing on this, we've got two, three, four, and up to five pedal assist levels with this. And that is of course on or off. Now down here, we've got our light switch, which I do prefer. So I always keep this on. And right here is our buzzer, which I'll give you a sample of, is super loud. It's probably the loudest that I have heard. And on the right here, we have our selector here for our gear. So as mentioned, Shimano seven speed. So this is to go up the gears, that is to go down. And then I have my rear brake right here. So mechanical disc brakes as mentioned. And this is not a lock grip here. So I would have preferred a lock grip because if I give this a bit of a twist, it's actually not too difficult to twist that grip there. So you can remove this and you can put on the optional 
accelerator but you need to check really with your local laws if that is actually legal a lot of countries in the eu you're not allowed to have accelerators only the pedal assist now overall the build quality i would rate as good the welds look good on the frame and the finish of the paint job in this matte black is excellent so i have it in pedal assist level one and as soon as you get up to about three kilometers and you're pedaling that is it will detect that it kicks in and gives me some assistance now riding along this gravel slightly bumpy here not a problem the front shock is helping out a little bit and it's just so effortless this is on pedal assist level one two mind you which is uh, the lowest setting here now when you stick it onto the higher levels it will take you all the way up to 25 kilometers per hour and that's when it will cut out so it will not go over that and I don't believe you can unlock the speed here with this one. Now for my climb test, so what I will do is climb up this gradient here. It's about 25 to 30 degrees and we'll see how it is going to perform with the 250 watt motor. I'm not really in a low gear, well I'm in fifth and this is going just fine on level one using up to 630 watts of power. I can see it's reading. So I'll try level two now. Now that's up to 800, 966 watts. And up to level five. Doesn't seem to make too much of a difference. Now I'm having to put a little bit of effort in, but unlike some of the other bikes I've reviewed, for example, like the ADO A20 and the A20F, not having to put in as much effort here. So if I lower down the gears, this should be an easy climb. Now what about the brakes? So they are mechanical disc brakes. Personally, I would have preferred them to go with hydraulic, but that would have probably put the cost up. So I'm gonna ride down here at a reasonable amount of speed and just test out how these brakes are. Now I've been feeding them in and for the last 20 kilometers, they have definitely improved. So once I get to this post here, I'll brake as hard as possible. One, two, three. Not amazing braking performance they still do need these pads a little bit of bedding in and really i wish they had gone with hydraulics so i've climbed up now about 350 meters over a few kilometers and the climb was effortless with this motor here it's got plenty of power i had to pedal a little bit but really it was not bad at all so i have lost now about one bar but it was down to two bars here with the battery so when you go on those big climbs, it really does start to burn through that battery. But I'm on some actual proper trails here to do some off-road tests. I have lowered my seat right down just to get my center of gravity down a little bit here. And let's see how it handles this. Now, I do hear the battery bank clattering away, okay? And the cables, so along this really bumpy bit, quite rough. And that front suspension definitely helping. Now there is quite a drop down the end here that I normally tackle on a 29 inch full suspension bike. So I hope I'm not gonna fall off here. It'll be a good blooper reel. So here it is. Oh, a bit rough, but it handled that okay. And now down the trail, of course, I need to make it back down to the coast. So this is a steep trail that is rocky. It's loose rocks. It's very technical. I normally tackle this on a Trek Rail 5, which has plenty of travel, full suspension. Now I've only got about 30 to 40 millimeters of travel with this particular bike. And already I can hear the battery is just banging around in there. A lot of rattle. Oh, this is very, very rough going with a hard tail and a poor shock on the front very rough hopefully i can make it down to the end without flipping off this bike so really it's not for these difficult technical trails just light easy going beginner trails is all i would tackle with a bike like this so i have made it here to the end of last rotors easy ride especially the climbs just effortless with the 250 watt motor all right, so the Voyager, as I showed you, with really rough technical trails, this is not the bike really for it. Downhill stuff, definitely not. But for the average Joe out there with some light off-road rides, this is gonna be fine. Now, what I really do like about it is the assistance that it gives me 
with the climbs uphill. So five different levels, and it really does power you up. It made this climb where I am right now, which is about 350 meter climb over approximately three kilometers, effortless, very easy. You still have to pedal a little bit, but it has a lot of power and does it really well, better than other e-bikes that I've tested out in the channel. Now the frame size and the geometry I do like. Now I'm 186 centimeters tall. I weigh just over 80 kilos and it's fine for me. There's no way my knees are going to strike the handlebars here. Now I would have liked to have seen lock grips on this. I would have liked hydraulic brakes because the braking performance on this I would rate as definitely average to below average. If I was going to be hanging on to a bike like this long term, I would probably look at replacing the mechanical calipers on this with hydraulic ones which still connect up via the cable or even replace it with some hydraulic disc brakes I think would give us a lot more uh, braking performance there which it is sorely lacking in. Now 27.5 inch wheels means that it does roll over the rough terrain and your off-road smaller easier rides not too bad but we do get a bit of rattling coming through from the removable battery here. So battery charge time is approximately seven hours and what about the range out of this? That's something that's very, very important. So the range is really, to me, around 60 kilometers. Currently, I'm down a few bars and I've managed to do 30 kilometers almost. And really, it depends on how many climbs you're doing. So if you don't climb a lot, you ride this mostly on the flat, it would be possible then to get around 70. But I would say for people that are slightly heavier, larger people, you're doing a few climbs, you're looking around yeah, 50 kilometers, I think, range that is possible out of this but it's also going to vary of course with the riders no doubt they tested their claim of 100 kilometers completely flat no wind with a very light rider they probably got some 13 year old that only weighs 50 kilos to get that 100 kilometers definitely not possible with my size my weight the front headlight very good the buzzer on this it's crazy loud. It's probably one of the loudest I've heard and it makes people startled. So that is good. So you can install an optional accelerator right here and that you have to check with local laws if that's actually legal to do so. But it's great that they give us that option. The frame welds, the paint job finish is very, very good. And all up, I think for the price that it sells for, which is around just over 1,000 euros or around 1,000 pounds or about 1,200 US dollars, I don't think is too bad and it's definitely a step up over some of the foldable e-bikes that I've been reviewing in the channel. So thank you so much for watching this video. I'm Chris, I'm getting sunburned, I'm super hot. It's about 38 degrees here. Thank you so much for watching this review.